Hello and welcome to another team profile and projection here on Talking Baseball. Today we're talking about your 29th ranked Colorado Rockies. Why did you guys rank them 29th? Well, they finished with 59 wins last year, 103 losses, good for fifth place in the NL West, 41 games back. In the division, they had the worst road record in all of baseball, 22 and 59. They were not good against Teams above 500, 31 and 72. Yikes. And they were 30th in runs allowed per game. All of those stats are not good. But, Jake, got any good news for us? Did they add anyone really cool and fun? Hey, you know what? Big old Jacob Stallings be helping out behind the dish, framing uh, Dakota Hudson, second shot. In Colorado, kind of every pitcher's biggest fear. Cal Quantrill in a trade with the guard dogs. Jalen wet your beaks. He'll probably be coming out of the pen. John Curtis, till the land and date my daughter. And Anthony Molina, the Rule 5 pick, which BBD's breaking down his stuff uh, after this uh, on his personal Instagram. They lost Chris Flexen. He ended up there at the end of last season. Brent Suter, Jolly Olive video of pitchers that survived Coors Field, maybe. Uh, Austin wins. Sure did. Connor Siebold, he went overseas. He said, I'm, I'm good with Colorado. No thank you. And Brian was serving it up. He's now a cubby. Uh, what does that... Uh, What's the lineup look like? This is supposed to be the signature of the Colorado Rockies. How many daughters are you going to have, or is your one daughter just going to date a bunch of big leaguers? What's going on with that? John Curtis is offering away his child if you till his land. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. That makes more sense. The lineup. I actually like the lineup, guys. Stop. I do. I'm being serious about In this. In context of a 29th. Ranked team? Yes, yes. Okay. In context of that, that probably going to win over 100 games. Maybe that's a spoiler to my over under later Ooh. on in the show. The lineup is going to feature our guy, Charlie Black, when he got an extension on the last day of the season last year. He'll be at Coors Field for what, like his 13th season? Good for him. Ezekiel Tovar will be at shortstop. Nolan Jones, thank you very much, Guardians, for that guy. He'll be in left. Chris Bryan at first. Ryan McMahon at third. Brendan Rodgers at second base. Guys, that's pretty good right there, right? I'm being serious. Hunter Goodman. Don't know that name. Right field. Elias <laughs> Diaz. Uh, all-star last year, by the way. Catching Bretton Doyle in center field. One of the best center fielders defensively in all of baseball. Got to get that back going a little bit. On the bench, a guy that I'm going to talk about a little later, Sean Bouchard. This guy just rakes everywhere he goes. Julio Carreras, Eli Harris, Montero, and your aforementioned Jacob Stallings rounding out the bench. James, tell me about that rotation in that bullpen, please. Yeah, Jay kind of uh, told you some names because there's some some fun pitchers there that you know and you you like, and I can't remember how to pronounce uh, Austin Gomber's name, Gomer, and it's tripping me up because um, when he got traded, we did that a lot. Anyway, Kyle Freeland. Is he from Colorado? Is he one of those that is from there, grew up there? He's got it tattooed on his foreham. Cal Quantrill from the Guardians. Austin G- G- Gomer? G- Remember we got in so much trouble back then for some? Somber Gomber? I don't know. Ryan Feltner, Dakota Hudson. Names to watch. Peter Lambert. That's not a baseball mm. player's name. That's, like an, that's a great That's name. an accountant name. It's a dude who hates his job. Noah Davis in the bullpen. Justin Lawrence, getting the closes. Tyler Kinley, fan of the show, Daniel Bard. Mm. Met Jake and I, said, you guys are short. Anthony Molina, Jake Bird and Jalen Beeks. I don't know. I hate how they have that. And Gavin Hollowell, BBD's favorite. <laughs> what you say? There's too many bird, bird stuff going beaks. on. Birds and beaks? Bird. Not, there's a lot of bird. I mean, bird barred, bird, there. beaks. What are we doing? Feltners looks like feather to me. I just I'm looking at birds. <laughs> Anyway, that's the rotation. There are some storylines that are happening with the Rockies last year. Obviously, it wasn't what you wanted to see on the field. I did get to see these guys in person the last three days of the year. There was some funny sh- stuff going on. They walked the Twins off on the last day of the mm. year on nice. a Jordan Luplo, Luplo passed ball. So position player pitching, Brenton Doyle steals third base, 
because he's the ghost runner on second, get scores on a pass ball. Season's over. They celebrate the f- how many wins that was that at the time? Yeah. 57, something like that. Um, but like I said, there are some pieces to kind of get excited about. There were some strong rookies in 2023. Nolan Jones being the guy he got 2020, I believe, also on that last day of the season. Um, looks honestly, guys. Kelsey Winger made it the point, said, you got to come eat this guy. I think he's a fan of our stuff as well. Um, or he just not even know who the heck I was, but he acted like he did, which was cool. Uh, he's a stud. He can throw the ball. He can run. He's got power. He looks the part at the plate. He's a big old dude. He's handsome. Like this guy's like kind of has, I don't want to put this on. He's kind of got like star potential to him. So as the guardians continue to look, for outfielders that can rake, they gave one away to the Colorado Rockies. So he's a guy to look out for sure. Obviously, if you're a Rockies fan, you know that. Brenton Doyle goes and gets it out there. Um, Gold glove winner. He, he's considered like the best defensive center fielder right now. And we got some good ones that are roaming out there. Um, and you watch him play. He goes, he takes great routes. Uh, he's fast. But the bat is it's still in development, if you will. So when it happens for guys like this, James, you got a question? No, I, I was reading up on Brenton Doyle because in our in our notes it says he's making changes, and that yeah. tickled my curiosity. So I went and read just two articles about the changes, and they had a really cool breakdown. I wish I could shout out the website, but I closed the tab. Of the batting stance change that the two changes made, one is wrapping the hands, the, the teacher man, you know, coiling back, and the other is no leg kick and toe tapping. And they said he put both together in September where he did have good offensive numbers, better offensive numbers. I was just going to say, let's go like in between both those. We don't have to go with the no stride. We don't have to go with the full Aaron Judge. Like something in between for most people is where it lands. I'm happy that he's making adjustments because he has to. Yeah, uh, September, he a is- 752 OPS. Gold glove center fielder like of his caliber and you can get the 750s OPS. That's a great, great player to have yes. on your team. Uh, last guy who was there last year that made a really nice impression is Eko Tovar, the shortstop, can really, really pick it. Um, he can run, like Kelsey made it a point to say in our notes that he's a very mature 22 year old. Um, 988 fielding percentage was the best in MLB history for a rookie shortstop. The guy, it's exactly what you want at the shortstop position a guy that's going to field the ball. You want the ball hit to him. They have some guys here, not to mention. You know, guys that have done it before, Blackman, Bryant, McMahon, like th- these are real deal Major League Baseball players. If these guys, these three guys I just mentioned right there, if they take a step forward again or even play how they played last year, like the, I don't think offensively is going to be the Au contraire, mon frere. Like I, you know, these were my rocks and <sighs> I, I've been broken a little bit and I, if I was doing these rankings, I'd have them below the Oakland A's. Oh. Um, last year, they only had one player with over 20 home runs, the Colorado Rockies. Ryan McMahon playing the hot corner, doing his thing. Um, you know, Zeke Tovar's biggest problem is not being on the Yankees and named Anthony Volpe. Otherwise, we'd be talking about this kid a lot, like exciting young baseball player. But, man, uh, that shot's fired. if you're the Rocks, like, what, what do you hang your hat on? Because this lineup that we're comparing to last year is like, hey, Randall Gritchick kind of kind of like balled out for them last year. Uh, he's he's gone right now. Um, that I don't I don't know, man. I, I just don't know where you're getting real production from this lineup. I hope Nolan Jones is the guy. Like I said, he I said no one had over 20 homers. He was 20 on the nose and he played 106 games. So like, hey. If you are the guy, you are the guy. What, what, what about are, Chris Bryant, bro? Like what, that's that's who they're relying on. He's got to be on the field, but that's that's where you get the power from. That's where you get the offense. Trev, he was on from. the, the field, guy you paid. He was on the field for that. eighty games last year, and he had a six eighty OPS. So if he's on the field, so now I've got two questions: Where's Chris Bryant still at as a player, and is he going to be out there as a player? So no, like it, this this lineup does nothing for me, and. The pitching staff is screwed. Like, I, Kyle Freeland's nice, and I hope he goes out and shoves, and I hope there's a chance, like, he gets traded because somehow he has a career 112 uh, ERA plus because he's been pitching at Coors Field. So, you know, his contract is interesting because I think he'll have two and a half. Well, he's got three years left, and it's around 15 mil per year that if 
you know, we've seen the price tag for quality starting pitching. Man, I'd love to see that guy pitch away from Coors Field. And Rockies fans, I know this isn't what you want to be hearing right now. Marquez is out most of this season coming off Tommy John. You're just not going to be able to get a pitching performance out of this rotation um, because we, we've seen these guys around the league. I mean, Dakota Hudson, a year that the St. Louis Cardinals were begging for any pitching, he got the boot. Um, and this team actually kind of got some pitching performances out of their pen last year, and I don't know if they can replicate that. So you're basically guaranteed the worst pitching staff in the league, and this offense isn't going to bring you anything. Yeah, but you're not considering Joe Rock. Triple-A pitcher, power-ranked 919th. I didn't consider him. That's their best triple-A power-ranked player. The farm was bleak when I looked at it. Okay. I thought there would be some guys coming up. They are getting, this franchise is getting covered by the Oakland A's stink. Okay. They have one prospect right now. And you like him. Adele Amador, I love him. But <laughs> they, have, they have two top 100 prospects right now. It's not great. Look, we know it's not great in Colorado. That's 100%. But I, I do expect Chris Bryant to be better than a 600 OPS guy. He needs to stay on the field. That's obviously, a, they paid this guy a lot of money to be a productive person in the middle of the lineup. He has not been that. So he needs to do that for this team. Well, um, you want to hear about Chris Bryant? Yeah. Because that's my, my storyline for you guys. Uh, he's only started 32%, 32% of his games as a Colorado Rocky after signing a seven-year, $182 million deal. He's had a lot of different injuries, a lot of different stuff. Interesting. He's going to be playing first base. I, I don't know if that's just the position he falls at or trying to prevent injuries. He hasn't played a lot of first base in his career. I think it's like 30-something starts at first. And he had some quotes at Rocks Fest. Hmm. You know, saying, kind of saying, like, people think I don't care, but I do. It doesn't show, but I it does eat at me when I'm not performing. Um, and then he has a lot of quotes that I um, personally wouldn't like if I was a Rockies fan. I don't think he's but their it's, number one player right now. He could be. He's very good. He's MVP. I was saying fan popularity. Oh, like yeah, you. obviously. No, no, it's just like, and I get it. Trev is going to completely disagree with me, and I think that's that's good. Because as a player, he's just saying, like, I look at the back of my baseball card, and I know I can do it, and I need to do it. And uh, his quote was, when I'm not performing to my standard, it eats at me. But a lot of times I fall back on what John Lackey said to me. When you play this game long, certain things are going to happen. But I know that there are much better days ahead in my future. It's like... You've done nothing, man. I almost like need you to, you know, play 50 games before you even start saying that. As a fan, if I'm a Rockies fan, I'm a, I'm, I'm a little like, you know, you got to play. Are so you, he has to play. I do think, Jake, that if Bryant can return to form, which I don't think is crazy, the lineup can be good. But I, I agree with you on the pitching. And the division got better. Yeah, I mean, this team is, and look, we're not kidding anybody. This team's not going to compete for the NL West. Uh, I, I do think there there will be some bright spots, um, and obviously Brian has to be a huge part of that. And, I, and look, man, I'm, I'm kind of with you, to be honest with you. We knew that taking money here and, and going to this franchise, like where will the motivation come from? Because you got a bunch of change in your pocket. You know the team's not going to win. That that. That's two main factors of motivation right there. Money and winning, right? Like now it all has to come from within every yeah. single day over 162 games. I got to be honest with people. I know it's the big leagues and you got to be able to be professional about it, but sometimes it's hard to get motivated when you know that you're going to lose a hundred freaking games. So uh, KB has got to figure that out big time, man. Um, or else they're going to be, I mean, they're still going to be where they're going to be. Um, but he needs to also be a good influence on these young guys, too. I think that's that's got to be a motivating factor for him as well. I feel bad for, like, Quantrill and some of these pitchers going there. I mean, it's it's tough. If, if, if Cal Quantrill or Kyle Freeland were on Tampa, you know, what would we say? We'd be like, hey, this is a guy, you know, what, what can he learn there? What can they tap into? 
you know, Freeland can have a great season and have a 4-6 ERA, which, Trev, you talk about looking up at that screen and seeing it, you know, that it just don't feel good. Um, and I, I like Freeland, and that's where, I don't know, I always dream up Rockies trades, and they never happened. I'm team, like, Ryan McMahon is a good baseball player. I've, I've been adamant on that. He plays really good defense at third, and I think his OPS plus gets hurt playing at Coors Field. Because I think he's a consistent, steady threat with a left-handed bat that if he wasn't doing the away from course at course Field thing and he just had a normal baseball life, I think he'd be like a 108, 110 OPS plus player with really good defense at third base. But instead, people look at his stats at the end of the year and they're like, wait, he's a 90 OPS plus player? He's never broken 100, but he's hitting 20 homers and playing good third base? Like, I don't know. This whole Rockies dilemma clearly gets me a little hot. And I, while I say all this, and I know my Rocks fans aren't happy with me probably, or maybe they are, I'm still willing to be a part of that front office because we just need a plan. And actually, Brent and no. Doyle, I will say, they should have great defense because that's something you can control. It doesn't have to do with altitude. doesn't have to do with anything at Coors Field. And the fact that they've got Brent and Doyle who can cover ground out there, and there's a ton of ground out there. Like that's, I like that as a start. And like we said with the Oakland A's, he's going to have a chance to figure it out. Because if you catch every ball, mess around with your stance. Let's get that 7, 725 OPS, and you can be a really good MLB player. I uh, Quantrill might be all right, and I kind of like them now because he's not a curveball slider guy. He's a cutter, sinker, fastball. And we've seen like Lance Lynn have success in Colorado and guys that don't rely on huge break. Um, Rocky should play spring training in Colorado. Or build some type of cool dome that changes, like... Altitude dome. Altitude dome, yeah. Ooh, I like an altitude dome. Yeah, it is cool. It's an advantage for the Denver Nuggets. And speaking of... Whoa, whoa, whoa. At the DraftKings Sportsbook, the NBA season is going on. Place your bets there as the action picks up. And, wow, you're going to get the the no-sweat bet. You can get a bonus bet. Up to $1,000 in the amount of your original bet if it doesn't hit. Minimum deposit 5 bucks and sign up using promo code TALKING. Get that no sweat bet up to one k or DraftKings has their daily fantasy stuff. Go check that out still. Download the DraftKings Sports app now. New customers use promo code TALKING. Get the no sweat bet. Promo code TALKING only at the DraftKings Sportsbook. The crown is yours. Trev, what do you have that over under at? DraftKings has that over under at 60 and a half. Um, slightly over what they won last year. As John mentioned earlier in the open, 59 and 103 with the walk off win the last day of the season. I, uh, I'll start this one off, guys. The, the, the pitching is going to be tough. I do like this offense. I, I do. Can you win over 60 games? It seems easy enough, but I just think they're gonna they're gonna get piled on in that division. I'm gonna take the under. It's it's gonna be tough. I hope some of these guys have breakout years or continue their breakout. Um, I'm going under. Hmm, Jake. I think we know what you're doing. Yeah, I mean, I I you know if I'm gonna say say those words, and maybe it's fueled by a little bit of anger at this franchise, but yeah, I um. You know, the Giants want to go. The Padres want to go. The Snakes are going. The Dodgers have gone. That I, Well, that's where I think I disagree with you. I think the Padres and Giants both are taking a step back in their pitching rotations. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think the Giants are taking a step back in their rotation. Well, they have a reliever that they're starting as a starter as their four. Hicks, Robbie Ray at midseason. Robbie Ray at midseason, I, I didn't. Alex I've, Cobb at some point. They yeah, but they don't them. have those guys. They had Cobb last year for 28 starts. But they'll get them. Um, they had, uh, what am I blanking on? Like, Stripling's going to start more. I don't know. I don't, I don't think either of them are contenders this year. Okay. I think it's Dodgers, Diamondbacks, those two, then the Rockies. But if the Rockies can win some games at home, like play to their strengths, which they should be able to do, and um, I don't know. I'll just bet on uh, Chris Bryant being good. I'll take the over. Maybe just playing the odds game since both of you guys are on the under. But like that. But yeah, I mean the Padres are losing Cy Young winner. 
They weren't that great last year. Lost a lot of close games. So I'm going to take the Rockies. That's the Rockies. They're going to win 62 games. I was on the fence. It's a good line. Go Rocks. I'm typically over, over, so I got to make sure I put some unders on the board. It's true. That is true. All right. Enjoy your February 16th. Maybe you already enjoyed it if you listen to this late. I hope it was a nice day. Mm. Go snowboarding. Rocky Thanks fans. for subscribing, by the way. <laughs>